everybody, welcome to the channel. Charlie here with IC Customs. In front of me I have a fuel tank for a old Kawasaki 70s model uh, Kawasaki that's used in uh, custom motorcycles mainly in the uh, Virago, the XV 750, 920 series motorcycles. A lot of uh, uh, people take and use this fuel tank in their uh, customizing their motorcycle. So during this time frame, it was really hard to obtain these fuel tanks. Uh, they're very scarce. This, this is a late 70s model replica. Um, so getting a decent fuel tank of that era, you know, an OEM uh, tank was really difficult. So I was able to obtain one, uh, make it mold worthy. And if you followed along in my channel, you would see that there is a video and I'll post a link up here at the top corner and you'll see there's a link to the, the series of making the mold that I used to produce this tank. So on this series, we're going to go through what I do when it comes to doing fiberglass work and molds. I cover the materials that I use in this tank and I give reasoning why I cover use those particular materials. Um, you know, fiberglassing, there could be a multitude of styles, uh, different opinions on how people do things. These are my opinions, these are what I do, and I've been doing fiberglass for well over 20 years. So anyways, I hope you uh, enjoy this series. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's continue on. Okay, here we are, we're at my fiberglassing workbench, and we're going to wax all of the part halves. Um, I usually wax um, all of the rims, the surfaces that uh, mold halves joined together. I do those. Um, same thing with here, all of that. I also wax even with the, the, I don't have any of the screws into the insert yet or any of the screws in the bottom half of this tank. Now, uh, I'm doing this video because I've had, you know, a few subscribers ask me to actually do a layup video in regards to this. So we're going to cover a few little basic items. You know, if you're kind of new at it and you want to learn a little bit more about some of the materials I'm using, I highly suggest uh, look at basic uh, fiberglass molds in my uh, series. And you can also look at the one-off fiberglass parts uh, series that I have all on my channel. So I highly suggest, um, like I said, please like and subscribe, follow along. If you have any comments, um, please uh Feel free to drop them down in the comments section and I'll do what I can to answer your questions or maybe generate a video that you might be looking for. Anyways, so we're going to go ahead and apply our mold release and then as soon as I get this applied, I'll come back and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, we're back and we've already applied uh, our mold release on all of the uh, fiberglass parts. Um, it's basically already dried and you can probably see in there there's a light sheen to it. Uh, once it's all dry, then you can wipe down all the parts, uh, wipe off the extra. So I'll show you now, you get a nice glare on there. So I'm going to get all these parts uh, uh, wiped off and then we'll put the inserts on and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Okay, now we have the mold halves assembled or the mold parts assembled and I have the threaded the bolts in place to add the inserts. When I assemble my molds, um, I have a whole bunch of, I'll just keep these because I have lots of molds. Um, all my molds use the same bolts, so these are 5 16 uh, bolts, and I have, most of the time they're all about uh, one inch in length, so, because of different flange thicknesses, so I want to make sure I got enough. I do have a few that are really long, and those are for um, specific points in a mold or something like that, but anyways, and then I have uh, wooden wedges, a cut that I can separate parts if I need to, but this is a really seasoned mold, so there's no need for wedges. The part pretty much comes out with little effort to remove it. So these are the threaded inserts that I use in this tank. Um, I purchased these from McMaster Car, um, and they are just for the particular thread. So for this uh, top of this tank where the fill valve or the fill cap goes, those are M4 threads. So I get M4 inserts. Now these little inserts, so they are brass, they're a specific length, they're pre-cut, 
it's hard to see. Let me tell me if I can come up here. And maybe you can see what they look like. They have the threaded hole and they have a, a flat surface so they can go up to the mating surface. And then they have these little barbs that are machined into it. And that's what grips into the fiberglass. So when I assemble the tank halves, I have to put the threads or the, the uh, screws into this part first because the way the, the mold has bolt together, as you can see from the inside, that you can't put those screw, two of those screws in because the, the mold half bolts are in the way. So I put it in position, clean my hands, and then I can add the inserts. All of the screws are waxed prior to assembly. The only thing you don't wax is your inserts. You don't want to wax those because you want the fiberglass to stick to them. Uh, and uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and install the inserts. You know, like I said, these are M4 inserts that are on here for the uh, flanged cap. And then these are M6 inserts that go for the valve, for the fuel shutoff valve. So I'll get these on, we'll come back, touch base real quick, and then get moving. Okay, we have the uh, inserts on. Let me see if you can put it in here. Now when I put these on, I only put them on um, with a little bit of finger tightness. You don't want to Hercules them on there. They just need to be snug. Uh, try to help control leaching of the fiberglass resin on there. So like I said, these are all just, like I said, finger tight. So what we're gonna do now is that these uh, particular parts are ready to spray the gel coat, but on this bottom half of the mold, I like to go do a little step extra, simply because on the fuel valve itself, it's, it's constantly saturated in uh, fuel, you know, gasoline, um, and some gasolines have ethanol in it. So we're, we are using uh, vinyl ester resin because it's much more ethanol resistant. So what I'm going to do is mix up a really tiny amount, about a teaspoon or so of eth you know, vinyl ester resin. And I'm gonna dabble it on here. And then when, when I get it all done, I'll show you what I did. So basically what I'm doing is creating a vinyl ester surface so that when you when the, the customer puts their uh, fuel valve in, um, the area that's still exposed on that flange, exposed to uh, ethanol gasoline, it'll be hitting uh, vinyl ester resin versus polyester gel coat. So I'm gonna put that on first, and what I'll do is that'll cure, and then I'll spray my gel coat over the top of it, and it'll be basically molded in to the surface of that and we'll go over that in, uh, in the completion video. I wanted to cover something. This is about the amount that I mix. Let me see if I can angle it where you can see. You can see I mix it kind of hot because I want it to work quick so I can get this done. Um, and it, vinyl ester resin, when you're mixing it hot, it tends to want to bubble. And I kind of work it a little bit to get the air bubbles out. So I don't want to apply onto the surface a bunch of air bubbles. So that make, when, when you go to take the part off, that will create pits and other deformities that you don't want. So before I lay this, basically I use this popsicle stick and I'm going to dabble it down just in the flange area. And there's a, a formed area in the mold, so it'll naturally puddle in that area where the flange is at. So once this is all done, I will go ahead and dabble it on there and then we'll come back and show you. Voila, it's all laid up. As you can see, it's just a small thin film laid in there and it naturally assumed. I try to be careful when I apply it on there so I don't get it all over the place. So it naturally forms in the area of the flange. So we'll let this cure to attack and then after that we will start we will spray our gel coat onto here. Okay, here we have our uh white gel coat. Um this is no wax. Um the uh I'm going to be using approximately 20 ounces of uh, white gel coat. I do spray this uh, parts excessively heavy because at the end there's going to be seam lines uh, on there and the, that'll need to be sanded off on the, the final product that the customer is going to do the sanding. So I generally try to give an extra amount of gel coat on there so to help them prevent from sanding too 
the actual fiberglass material. So we're going to uh, mix this material up with our methyl ethyl ketone peroxide and add it to our spray gun. Um, more details on the spray gun. You can uh, watch the basic fiberglass mold uh, video series that I have and I cover everything about this. Um, this is this is a modified paint gun, so need to watch that video. I'm not going to cover it in this video on how I did so. Um, so we're going to get this ready to go, and I'm not going to cover spraying it because I don't want to overspray on my camera. So I will spray this up. I'll give you a show what it looks like after it's been sprayed. Um, as it, as noted, this is an advanced series, so you need to have some kind of basic knowledge on how to apply the gel coat. So I'm not going to cover that, but I am just showing you how I assemble this tank or how I build this tank. And that's what this uh, segment of videos is about. All right, it is all sprayed up, as you can see in here. I don't worry too much about the surface um, runs or cobbled up areas. Generally, what I like to do is spray it, you know, multiple coats. I'll spray an initial coat on it and let it set for a few minutes while I do the other mold and then come back. It gives it a little off gassing and then allows a better coat. When you're just do, using wax such as I am, you, you'll get uh, orange peel, basically fish eyes in all on the sides. So if you continuously put multiple coats on it, um, you know, misting them on there, you'll eventually get where the fish eyes will disappear, with, especially with gel coat. The thicker the gel coat, the better off you are. This particular brand of gel coat that I'm using is a little bit thinner, so it did take a little bit more work. But as you can see, it is laid up here. Here's the other part. And I sprayed right over the top of that uh, vinyl ester resin that we put down there for our mating surface. Because once this glass is all laid up, we'll be cutting a hole in here and then we'll be putting a tank sealer once the the tank is joined together and that will seal up any of the edges that gets exposed to uh, ethanol fuel. So that is this. So when this all cures and we come back, we're going to be applying some a uh, putty. We're going to mix it up from vinyl ester resin, some cabosil and some milled fibers. And we're going to make a putty to taper out around these threaded inserts. So it will make for laying up the glass around it a little bit easier. Also, any of the sharp corners, we're going to apply some of that putty in there. Same thing around here with all these little inserts. We're going to put putty around that and that stepped edge there. And along with this back corner up in here, we're going to apply some. So when we come back, we'll uh, I'll go over that. All right, we are back. I have sprayed these and they've sat for 24 hours. Um, the weather is a little bit cooler, so I tend to like to let them... Uh, cure much longer. I tried putting it out in the sun today. It was in the, the high 50s. I uh, did put them outside in the sun to try to get a little UV to help cure. Um, but so now they're cured enough where I'm going to go ahead and apply the buildup around all of the threaded inserts and in the corners of the molds, as I noted earlier. All the sharp corners. I need to uh, fill those in and create a slight radius so when the glass is laid in it can sweep rather than having a sharp corner because typically when you have a sharp corner you tend to get air bubbles and this fuel tank um, air bubbles is the enemy uh, especially when the customer is going to be painting uh, the item so they're going to have to sand it or anything like that they spray it with or they paint it with a dark color that attracts heat um, that heat will cause the air bubble to expand and you'll see a bubble in the actual surface finish of the, the part. So what I've done is I've used some of the uh, vinyl ester resin. Um, I used one ounce. That I have a, lots of these little mixing cups. Um, I tend to try to mix this very accurately. Um, if you do too less of a catalyst, it'll it may not cure so you have to be very careful when you're using vinyl ester resins um, so this has about a half of one of these in milled fibers which is a, a ground fiberglass material and then i thicken it with cabosil and it's probably got two to three 
of these of Cabasil uh, powder in here and it makes a really thick paste um, it's really thick right now but by the time I add my seven drops of methyl ethyl ketone peroxide in there it will thin it just a little bit so the goal is is to try to keep it from drooping once I've put it on the actual parts and then spread it out the if it's too thin it'll it'll start at the weight of it. it'll just cause it to uh, feather out and it'll still work but my goal is is to um, have a much harder material around the threaded inserts and when you put the glass on there you're least likely to get an air bubble because an air bubble around those inserts would be bad because now there's nothing to hold it locked in place so when you put a little tightening on the screw you could potentially break it free with inside of the part so we're going to get this added on there and we'll come back i'll show you what it looks like all right we have it all laid up and you see i have a radius in there a little bit bigger in this deep corner back here because it'd be really hard to get the brush to push the material in underneath and then around the actual inserts it's the same there and then I have a deep little pocket back in here so that was done and then it was feathered out this way and then of course around the uh, actual flange and then on this side here none of this stuff you won't be able to see any of it uh, once it's laid up basically all I'm trying to do is get rid of the 90s and the areas that a potential air bubble could be formed you'll be able to see the air bubbles uh, when you're laying up the glass, but I still put it in there to uh, give a, a much better and stronger finish right around the flange, and it'll get a buildup on here. Same thing in there. So at this point, we're just going to let this cure, 